Hello everyone and welcome to DiPy workshop. Today I will be presenting image registration, which is a common step in the medical imaging field. Image registration is in all diffusion imaging pipeline, so I don't see how you you can ex escape it this step. I know that image registration is a black box for many people and looks scary. So the goal of this talk is to open this black box and understand all the basic concepts. My name is Serge Kudoro, and I'm a software engineer for the Guy Faridis Research Group. Also, I'm one of the DiPy and Fury core contributor. I'm taking care of the DiPy and Fury releases and everything related to the maintenance of the both project. So let's start. The session will be split in three parts. The first video is a part one. We will look at the basic concept of image registration. What are medical, what are the medical acquisition issue and how image registration can solve those problems. In the video two, it will be dedicated to image registration methodology and affine registration. From transformation to optimizer and including metrics, we will decompose every step of the registration process and see how we can use it with DiPy. In the part three, we will review some advanced transformation model and specifically the different morphic registration model. So what is image registration in medical imaging? So image registration is just an, an alignment problem. In this simp simple example, we have one moving image that we will call I am the X that will, that will be deformed to fit the other image, the fixed image that we will call I F the X. To do that, we need to find a displacement that we will call D dx. That makes I am the x plus dx D dx specially aligned to I the F the x. So in other words, an equivalent formulation is to say that the registration is a problem of finding a transformation T the x where you see the equation on this slide. That make I am, so our moving image, specially aligned to our fixed image. The transformation is defined as a mapping from the fixed image to the moving image. So our goal is to find the best TDX. Usually, the fixed and moving image have a specific dimension D, and each of the image has their own special domain. But before we go deeper into that, let's see why do we need this alignment. The first reason is a variety of modalities and dimension dimensionality in medical imaging. A subject can have uh, a scan at a different period of time, and you might want to compare them. For this, task, for this task, you need to align your data, whatever the dimensionality you use. Meaning, if you have a 2D slice, or if you want to compare a 2D slice with a 3D volume, or 2D volume, 2D image, or 3D image. Same story with modalities. Different type of data can be obtained in medical imaging like CT, PET, MRI, cryo, fMRI, or OIS. Aligning different modality might help you to combine some of the modality of some of them and to augment the information of your data. In our field, diffusion imaging, you will have to handle one of the most common and challenging scenario, 
the motion when you scan children or adult patients. So in this illustration, <clears throat> I mean, indeed, a typical diffusion imaging dataset consists in n volume. The voxel and densities of each volume reflect properties of the water molecule displacement along each of the sample diffusion encoding setting. A motion between a volume is really frequent during a patient scan. So you can see in these uh, first, four first images in this illustration, we represent uh, this uh, between volume motion. The last image on this illustration represents the within volume motion, meaning a significant subject motion between the acquisition of the first slice and the last slice of a single diffusion imaging volume. This last case, we usually encounter it with a young children scan. All this subject motion is unavoidable, unavoidable and uh, leads to uh, incorrect measure if you work with this kind of data. So thanks to image registration, which can solve uh, this issue. Then the last issue that uh, for dealing with image, medical images and application are the difference between coordinate space. As you can see uh, in this picture, there are three coordinate system commonly used in imaging application. So the first coordinate system is a word represented here by the scanner with the coordinate system X, Y, Z. The second is anatomical coordinate represented by anterior, posterior, right, left, and inferior, superior. An, ex an easy example is a neurologist and radiologist co convention. As you can see in the picture here, the subject, the subject has a stroke in the left temporal lobe, causing a dark area on the MRI scanner. Are you sure? Are you sure a left a radiologist can say? Because his coordinate system is quite different. We use LAS, which is in neurologist, we will use RAS, as you can see on this picture. Then the last coordinate system that you can see is the IGK. So this coordinate system is a uh, is common for all the algorithm who work with a grid. When we project our object uh, from the physical space to the grid, we certainly have a different size, scale, orientation, and we need to normalize it. We want to make sure that we transform a different set of data into one coordinate system. This transformation might imply some misalignment. So now let's briefly, how can we achieve this alignment? So how to do an image registration? Image registration at the end is an optimization problem. At the starting point, you have a measure to compare two data sets. So of course, the two data sets uh, should be in the same space. So here in this figure, you have uh, this point where the measure live in a specific domain. We want to minimize the difference between these uh, two scans. If you have a small measure difference, it means that the alignment, the alignment is closer. If the measure is bigger, of course, it means that we are going further and further between our two, two volumes. 
the challenge of uh, the optimization is to find in this uh, high dimensional space the global minimum of this measure, which is not a trivial problem. As you can see in this uh, illustration, you can be easily stuck in a local minimum. And uh, a world field is working on this optimization problem. Usually, a special normalization or a special transformation consists uh, so in a three part. So as we see, as we say just before, the first part is uh, picking the optimization method. Uh, I will go further on the second video concerning uh, this part. The second part is uh, picking your transformation model. So how, which method you will use to align your two volume. And then the similarity metric, which will give you uh, uh, value to estimate how well are they aligned. So let's have a quick overview of uh, the transformation model. So the transformation model can be uh, divided in two categories: the linear transformation, the linear transformation category, with uh, some uh, specific features. So usually this is a global transformation. Uh, the linear transformation uh, composed uh, with uh, rotation, scaling, trans translation, and affine. I will go more in detail in the second video. But the most important uh, part and feature that you need to keep in mind is the linear transformation preserve length, angle, and parallelism. The second category is a non-rigid or non-linear transformation which in this case, now we are working more locally. We have a different uh, technique like uh, freeform, LDD, MM, elastic. Same, I will talk more about it on the third video. And this time we don't preserve the parallelism, but we preserve the diophomorphics. So to illustrate that, you can see here on the different uh, figure how the difference between working locally and globally and what is what is it to preserve the deform of the parallelism the second point is uh, the similarity metric metrics are probably the most critical element of a registration problem it quantify the similarity between uh, two volume. They measure how well uh, target object is matched by the reference object. After uh, any transform uh, has been applied to it. More the score is higher, more similar are the volume. If we think about it, it's a bit a kind of an inverse, the inverse of a distance uh, metric. So how to choose how to choose them? Hmm. This is a really comp this is a really complex, and we'll talk more on about it on the part two. But uh, to give you a, a small uh, a small overview, you can see on this figure a global guideline on how to pick your metrics. So let's start with, uh, at the beginning, you have your volume here. You want to check if uh, they have a similar appearance. So this is really the first question that you have to ask yourself when you start to do an image resolution. How look my volume? Do they have a similar intensity? So by asking all these kind of questions, you will define your similarity metrics. So for example, if uh, the end density are quite close, you will have the tendency to choose a cross correlation matrix or some square difference uh, metric. In the other hand, if uh, your intensity 
are quite different, you will go more with a histogram based intensity. And the last uh, choice, if they are completely different, you might use uh, some landmark uh, metrics. When you define your metrics, you will need uh, to choose your transformation. So it's not necessary to pick um, a complex transformation with uh, many uh, deg degrees of uh, with many uh, degrees of liberty. If you don't need it, you will have to analyze your data to see if uh, you simply need to update a simple rotation and pick the specific transformation. Then the last part, you just need to apply uh, this transformation following the metrics and compare it with the metrics. So that's all for the first part. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, this first part and uh, I want to let's see you on the second part, which I will talk about uh, the affine registration. Thank you for listening and uh, see you for the next video.